Yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? Good morning. Let's do a little cold calling. <clears throat> Today, we're going to be using the batch dialer. And we're going to be monitoring our VAs. We have some VAs that are online already dialing. And I'm going to just kind of monitor them, maybe barge in on them as well. We do have that capability. I'm going to move my workstation here to make it work the best. All right, guys, let's jump in. So, again, we are going to be using the batch dialer today, guys. Let me know if you can hear me. I want to make sure that I got my mics and everything all set up properly. And you can see we have three active calls, two online agents right now. I'm going to move this up a little bit here. Getting a little workout in this morning on the treadmill with the standing desk. All right, so Jane's on a call. Let's jump on and listen. All right, Brian and Franklin said yes. All right, guys, good morning. All right, we got one, two, three, four, five, six calls going out over here on the dialer system. Once we have somebody that connects, we are able to listen in and or barge in on these calls. Six. I'm sorry, this is New Air Bank. Oh, I'm sorry, I got the wrong number. That's okay, I'm sorry. All right, and sometimes we get wrong numbers. We get wrong numbers from time to time, and that's, and that's just the way that it is, guys. That's okay. So. My guess today, if I'm on here for, let's see, it's 10.45 a.m. Central Time. Hope you guys like my backdrop because it is freaking snowing out my window here right now. Makes me feel like I'm on the beach here. <laughs> um, let's see here. If I did this for about two hours, give or take, with two agents online, I would imagine that we're going to get anywhere from two to six leads added to the system. Now, when I say leads, I am actually referring to just anybody that answers the phone, that raises their hand and basically says, hey, I'm interested in selling my property. They're not necessarily a motivated seller, right? They're just somebody that says, yeah, I'm interested in hearing an offer or you know, I, I wanna sell and maybe you come across somebody that says, yeah, I need to sell and we're gonna get out there right away. This is a numbers game, guys. Definitely a numbers game. I want everyone to be aware of that. Um, we have three callers that we hire to help us do calling. They each work 20 hours a week. All right. And if you guys are interested, um, we have partnered with our cold calling company to help bring them more clients. So if you guys want a VA, somebody that's doing exactly what they're doing for me for yourself, uh, there should be a link below this video where you can fill out an application and we would be happy to connect you with those people. The greatest thing about our virtual assistants is they work 20 hour shifts. You can hire somebody for 40 if you like, but I prefer 20 hour shifts and they work Tuesday through Saturday. Now you can have them work whatever you like. Personally, I don't really like working Mondays or Sundays. So we just kind of staggered them to work on uh, Tuesday through Saturday. It just seems to work the best for us. Um, and again, we are just monitoring our VAs today. So let me move my big old head out of the way so you guys can get an idea of what we are looking at over here on Batch. And you can see 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine individual phones are actually being dialed right now. So we have three agents online. Each one is set up with a dialer seat. And I believe that we have the current campaigns set to three phone numbers per line. All right. Right now we're doing a South City high equity campaign and we're going to be doing a Farmington high equity campaign. One of my, um, one of my, uh, main acquisitions guys is lives down in Farmington. So he's looking to build a little portfolio in his own area. And uh, we're helping him out by doing some marketing guys. All right. So we can head back over to reports. Now I'm actually logged in as an admin right now. Um, you can log in as individual people with dialer seats, or you can log in as a supervisor and you can monitor those individuals. So that's really the coolest part in my opinion about this software is, you know, we have outsourced individuals doing a lot of the dialing for us and uh, we pay them $5 an hour. Now that also comes with a manager that will monitor their work and basically, you know, make sure that they are um, making the calls, you know, as they're supposed to, but also that they're getting the lead from the cold call activity pushed over into the CRM of your choice, right? Now there is a small uh, CRM built into the batch dialer. And again, guys, if you are brand new to the batch dialer, highly recommend you check it out. Uh, you get a seven day free trial with this product, which is really, really awesome. And then unlimited dialing. So at the very minimum, go check it out. There should be a link right below this video or you can use code Dave. Uh, but again, I like to monitor. So here's Jane. See if we can't hop onto this one. Sometimes you have to refresh. Let our page load. My internet hasn't been the best this morning. Looks like I just got caught on the tail end of that one. All right, let's answer some questions here. Yep, that one reset. So again, we got three people on. We got nine active calls going out at any given time right now, guys. That's three people monitoring three lines. When they connect with a seller, um, it'll pop up on our screen and we can either monitor those calls or we can barge in on those calls. Um, again, their job is to just locate individuals that have any interest in selling at all. So we're really looking for motivated sellers, of course. But what ends up happening is we end up finding people that are looking to sell. They're not really motivated today. And we end up adding those people to our CRM and we just follow up with them. And here's the thing, our average deal, guys, the average deal that we do in our business, it takes us probably four to six months on average. And the reason is, is because we get a lot of individuals and a lot of leads that come in. And they're not really like super motivated today when they come in. And that's okay, right? What we do is we add them to our CRM and we follow up with them. And we just want to be there for them on the day or the time frame in which they do get motivated. So here's a perfect example. I'll keep this short because I know you guys are wanting to see Batch Dialer. And actually, I can move it back over there while I tell the story. But I called a lady yesterday and I had spoke to her three months ago. And for the most part, she wasn't motivated three months ago when I spoke to her. Now, she's been in our system for about a year and we've spoke to her probably five or six times over that year. But it had been three months since I had actually called her last. And when I called her yesterday, we had just gotten snow on the ground. She was frustrated with the weather. So it was a timing thing, right? And she was asking $65,000 for this little two bedroom, one bath condo. At the time that we had spoken last month, three months ago, 65 was her number. I offered her 35, which is basically half of what she was asking. And she said, no way. You're crazy. I'll never sell for that. Well, I called her yesterday and she said, Dave, it's snowing on the ground. I'm trying to convince my husband to move us to Florida and I'm just done. I'm just, I've had enough. I'm done. Uh, your offer is extremely low, but I'm willing to accept it just to get this property off of my plate. I just don't want to deal with it anymore. And that's the motivation, right? So really what I'm getting at is 
you know, if your efforts, so like, let's say today, let's say we do, you know, two hours, maybe three hours of, of cold calling today. And, and I'm going to be monitoring my, my virtual assistants here as well. I like to, I like to have them help. Um, but let's say that they don't get any individual that's like super motivated. That's like basically saying, Hey, Dave, run out here right away and make me a low offer on my house. That's okay. Because this game is more than just trying to find those individuals. Now here's the coolest part. You stumble across those individuals, right? If you do enough calls and you do enough marketing, you are going to stumble across these individuals. See all these, all these numbers ringing right here in the background. This is really cool. I got my virtual assistants on here making calls guys, whenever they connect, we're going to jump in. Um, but what we do is we find the people that are interested and then we try to make friends with them. We build relationships with those individuals and just say, Hey, you know, we're not necessarily looking to pay your retail. In fact, we don't, we are investors. Um, but we do have a lot of convenience that we can provide, right? We can pay cash, we can close fast and we don't require our sellers to make any repairs or do any cleaning of the property. And basically, you know, we say when you're ready, let us know. And if you want that level of convenience, we got two calls going right now. Um, we're here for you and we just make friends. Let's jump in and see Oh, that one failed. Looks like it ended as I clicked it. Oops, that one ended too. And now this system does drop voicemails as well. I, I get people that, that have questions about that sometimes and uh, it does drop the voicemails. All right, let's take a look at some of our questions here. Aaron says, how much are the VAs and do you have the ability to verify their sales ability, check for accents, et cetera? Yes, of course. We, we pay $5 an hour for our VAs. It's a very uh, it's a very competitive rate, but at the same time, you know, we want to reward them for their efforts. Uh, that also comes with a manager to monitor them. All right, let's see if we can't jump on. That one failed, it must have just ended. How about this one here? Here we go. So if you are interested in hearing an offer on a property? No. Oh, okay. I mean, do you have any plans maybe in the near future? Or how long no. do we? Mm -hmm. now, uh, maybe you have other properties you might be interested in selling the home. Um, hey, Kareen, how's it going? Hi. Yeah, I'm good. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. How awesome. Yeah, so I'm watching right now and looking for the, you know, the queue as well. Oh, you're talking about as a monitor. So everybody, I got Kareen on the line here. Kareen is actually uh, one of the managers that monitors our virtual assistants. So she works for me as well. And essentially the virtual assistants work for, work for her. And me and her communicate about what the timeframes look like and what the softwares that we want to use and what systems and i'm actually communicating with the virtual assistants of course as well uh, but kareen is the one that manages the company and if you guys are looking for one i would be more than happy to connect you with kareen you can fill out an application and uh, she can connect you so the vas are five dollars an hour uh let's see have the ability to verify their sales ability yes because we are monitoring them we're also getting tagged in our crm every time a new lead gets in there so of course if a you know, if, if we don't see a lead come in for a day or two, like what's going on? Are they working? Are they not? Typically our callers are bringing in anywhere from uh, one to four leads per, per cold calling session, which consists of about four hours each day. Again, we're, we're, we're bringing people on uh, at 20 hours a week and they dial five days a week, Tuesday through Saturday. So it's about a four hour session and Green, you don't necessarily need to, to do monitoring in the real time because I am, mm -hmm. you know? All right, let's see. Dana's got a call that's connected here, it looks like. Keeps moving on me. Uh, I mean, just the property or the house or what? Uh, the property uh, at your house at 100, uh, 1004 McCormick Drive, Montaire. Is that right? Yeah, that's the address. Mm -hmm. um, 
Is this Percy Wolf? Uh, who did you say this was? This Jane from Household Easy. Household Easy? Yes. We're home buyers. Oh. So how long you own this property? Uh, about seven years. Seven years, great. And do you have price in mind? Uh, uh, I don't even, I don't think we want to get rid of it. Actually, we really like it here. Um, so do you have any other property you might consider selling? No, this is it. Um, do you know anyone who's interested in selling their property? Hmm. You know anybody interested in selling a property? Like your family, your relatives, um, your office mates? No, I asked my wife. She don't know either. Mm, okay. Uh, may How I much are you? Yes. Oh, go ahead. Um, may I know? Um, have you done any remodeling in the last five years? Mm, just a, a little bit, but the house was pretty new, so we didn't do much good. Mm hmm Okay. Are the rooms a good size? Oh, yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, how is the kitchen? Uh, could use more cabinets. Mm -hmm. Could use more cabinets. All right, so this guy's not clearly motivated, but uh, who is on this call? Jane. Jane is doing a great okay, job great. of just talking and making and, a friend, um, right? So this is good. Like, yard? And the fact that she asked, do you know of anybody else that uh, may be interested in selling? That's huge because, you know, it's a one in a hundred shot, but ask it every time. And people are going to say, you know what? My aunt or my grandma or my niece, they, okay. they're looking to sell right now. Actually. And what is your Here's their frame? number, right? All every little piece adds up in this what, business. Quick time frame? You just got to start mm -hmm. somewhere, guys. You got to start what? somewhere. Um, and selling this property. Well, we don't. We don't really want to sell it. So Thank you. perfect. So that one, I'm going to end that one because the guy's not motivated. But again, she kept him on the phone, right? And that's really the whole point. It's just this is a numbers game. You have to understand that, right? So the more calls you make, the more chances of getting on the phone with somebody that's interested in selling. And then the more times you get those interested sellers, the more times you're going to come across one that's motivated. And everybody else that's not motivated, but basically had raised their hand to say, yeah, I'm interested in selling. You're going to add to your CRM, guys, and you're going to start calling these individuals. OK, that's the name of the game, making relationships with these individuals and being there for them when they're ready to sell. That's really the goal here. That's that's kind of the secret sauce. It's not, let's sit down for two or three hours, make a bunch of cold calls, and if I don't come across a motivated seller in two or three hours, then I'm gonna throw in the top. No way, you cannot give up. This is something that we're gonna be doing every single day. In fact, I have three people calling right this second. Now, the coolest part is, even if you don't have a lot of luck getting through to people, we're going to be dropping a ton of voicemails today, right? So this is ringing voicemails. Everyone's heard of the ringless voicemails. Well, this is actually a missed call on their phone that then leaves a voicemail, right? So even if you don't have a ton of positive, um, let's say, you know, let, let's say you don't get a bunch of people on the phone during your call session or your virtual assistance call sessions. So what? You probably just left 100, maybe 300 voicemails over you know a three to five hour period of time. And that's great because people are gonna call back and they're gonna be interested. Or maybe they do have a property that they wanna sell. Again, this is a numbers game, guys. All right, let's jump on. Looks like Jane's got a, got a connection here. It's not letting me connect to it. Sometimes you gotta do a quick refresh. Kareen, how are you today? I think you're muted.
It's all good. Let me know when you're ready. We'll pull you back in. Here we go. This is Dana. Oh, looks like the call ended. That's all right. So we have two agents online. Looks like somebody's taking a break. But that still means that we should have up to six calls going out at a time. Triple line dialers. There you go. Boom. For each person. Now, you can actually modify this up to four, five, up to 10 lines at once. Um, we Our goal is to get people on the phone, not to leave a bunch of voicemails. We like to do both. So we like to choose three. Jane looks like she may have connected. Nope. Looks like that was just going to the voicemail. No big deal. Let's see if we can't bring Kareen back. Kareen, can you hear us? Hey, sorry. Hey, hey you're good. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, and just read some um, comment on YouTube and check the girls because one of the VA has an internet connection issue and she had to restart her PC. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's all, that's all good. We got two going right now anyway. So yeah. we'll have three here in a minute. No big deal at all. Um, I'm getting some questions over here in the um, in the chat here about you know how many VAs do we have? So we have three callers right now, and we'll probably be bringing on another one or two. Um, and Kareen is helping us with that. So guys, if you have interest and you want to work with the same people that I'm working with, uh, there should be a link down below the video here where you can fill out a quick application, and Kareen will be the one reaching out to you with more information about that. Uh, typically, how many people do you have working for you right now, Kareen? Uh, as of this moment, I have 18 VAs. 18. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, only three of them are, are mine, guys. Yes. You know, so he, she's got multiple people always looking for work and herself. And I think she has one or two assistants and they are basically monitoring them the entire day. Right. Um, yeah. One manager can monitor, you know, 10 to 15 people, which is cool. So it's, you don't necessarily need a manager for each VA. That would be kind of foolish. Uh, but she is the one monitoring it, keeping them trained, keeping keeping track of the hours. If they have internet outages or are off a particular day, she allows them to make those hours up on an, on another day that's maybe outside of their shift. We are pretty easy going around here. As long as the dials are getting made and the leads are getting added to the system, that's really what matters, right? That's kind of the most important part. All right. Kareen, I'm going to move you down to the corner yep. here, just like me, but you're still on my screen here. And uh, let's see if we can't connect with uh, some motivated sellers, guys. That's the name of the game. Can I make this a little bigger? It looks like I can. There we go. I'm going to go too big here. All right. So two people are on. Six lines are ringing. Boom, 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 boom. I love it. Now, where do we get the leads from, guys? That's probably a good question that I would think people are curious about. We got these leads from Batch Leads, actually. Um, we typically pull our leads from PropStream or Batch Leads, one or the other. And in this particular case, we pulled these two campaigns. So we can go over here to our campaigns area. We have a South City high equity campaign. And we're using Podio for this particular campaign. We have a couple different CRMs. Uh, and then we have a Farmington campaign. So both of these campaigns um, are the current campaigns. And basically, both of those came from batch leads. Here you go. Jane's on a call. Hold easy. And I was calling about a property, I believe, on the 3633 Hazel Run Road. Is that right? Why are you calling? I'm calling to see if you're interested in a customer. You're going to get that, guys. That's all right. No, thank you. Do you no, know anyone you. who's interested in selling their property? No, I don't. Sorry. I'm glad she asked, though. That's what we like to hear. I always have them ask. And, Kareen, you do a good job of training your people as well, you know, not only for just general cold calling as in, in general, but always ask. When you get somebody on the phone, if they don't have a property that they're interested in selling or they don't even own one, per se, ask them if they know somebody who does. You're already on the phone with an individual. Yeah. All right, let's do a refresh here. How many people are you trying to place right now, Corrine? You got some uh, people that are looking for work right now? Uh, actually, right now I have 15 for pooling. 
and they're still waiting for a client. And I'm looking to get more VAs this February. Perfect. Laura asked, are you looking at on market or off market or both when searching on batch leads? I always, that's a great question, guys. I always exclude on market. I never market to people that are on market ever. Uh, last year, Mike and I and, and, and the team, we bought just just under or just over 90 houses. I think it was 92. And I think two or three of them were on market. So you can find deals on the MLS, but you're going to have to work extra, extra, extra hard. Um, all the marketing that we do that's direct to seller is off market. And the reason is, is because the agents typically have done two things. One, they kind of get in the way whenever you're wanting to buy direct from the seller. And that's kind of our value add is that they don't have to pay commissions if they work directly with us. If there's an agent in the way, they will have to, right? Um, but also you got to think, this is, this is actually kind of funny, but I was talking to my buddy just last night about this, right? And he was saying, um, he was, he's an agent, right? And I, and I said to him, I said, Hey, do you ever go into, you know, a meeting with a homeowner or a seller? And, you know, is this ever how your pitch goes? Uh, hey, Mr. Seller, I'm pretty confident that I can get you, you know, 70 to 80 cents on the dollar for this property. <laughs> and he said, uh, he said, no, nah, man. And I go, yeah, because you're probably telling them you're going to get them retail. Like that's what agents do. Right. So no offense to any agent out there that's watching. Um, however, you know, agents are going to basically sell themselves. They have a service and no one's going to come in and say, yeah, my service is going to get you 60 to 70 cents on the dollar. Like, let's be real. Like nobody's doing that. So when there's an agent in the way, they've already kind of made a promise to that seller that they're going to do everything that they can to get them a good high retail offer. So with that being said, I just avoid listed properties altogether because the agents already convinced the seller that, you know, they're going to get a good price. And, you know, that's not our business. My model isn't paying retail. If my model was to pay retail, I wouldn't ever come across a wholesale deal and or a great deal for me to personally fix up and flip or add to the rental portfolio using the Burr strategy, which are two of my favorite things to do outside of wholesaling. All right, let's see here. We got nine, nope. Six lines going out and you can see these change. And I think the AMD is answering machine detected. And then there's also a code for voicemail being dropped. And I believe it's like VMD or something like that. But you can also see the number that's calling. What type of phone? Is it a cell phone? Is it a landline phone? The contact name. And then of course the campaign. So it looks like everybody's calling on the Farmington high equity campaigns. Hey, Kareem, can you send a message over to the to the three agents that we have online and have them all go to the South City ones? Reason is, is I have zero interest in Farmington yeah. right now. I want them to obviously finish that campaign, uh, but I like South City. So I can barge in and actually be more helpful to the South City leads that we're calling on versus those Farmington ones. I'm doing the ones in Farmington kind so of- So they're people. going to log in and South, um, going to use the South City campaign? Yeah, but we only have two active campaigns okay. right now. So what I'm what I, what I would like to do is have them stop doing the Farmington one just to the next you know two or three hours here while I'm live with you. Right, um, sure. To focus on the South City again. That's an area that I'm interested in. That I will be able to be more helpful, you know. And you know, if somebody comes on and they are motivated um, and they're down in Farmington again, I don't know that area. That's like an hour and a half south of St. Louis. Um, so it's just going to be much more difficult for me to determine what the value of the property is and or anything along those lines. So yeah, if you don't mind, shoot them over a message and have them switch campaigns for me. Yeah, sure. I did Dale Denton says, I want houses in Farmington. Look at that, I love it, I love it. So Dale, we're adding like, you know, anywhere from two to 10 leads a day for properties in Farmington. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, they, you know, they, they don't always come in motivated right away. You gotta work these leads, they take four to six months. So if you, if you are familiar with Travis Wakefield, uh, one of my acquisitions guys and partners, he's, I don't even call him an employee. He's, an, he's a partner of mine at this point. Uh, reach out to him. Get on his buyers list specifically for uh, Farmington because he's got a ton of leads. He's working down there and new leads are literally coming in every hour as well. So, uh, yep, Dale, looking forward to working with you, buddy. Lunch table, like the name. He said, I made an offer to somebody three hours 
And the guy raised his initial price by 10K after declining my discounted offer. He's not motivated. Move on. Don't overthink it, right? Uh, Laura says, wow, thanks so much. This helps a lot. No problem. Laureen says, are you looking at on market or off market or both? Always off market. Dale says, what's his contact info? Dale, shoot me a, uh, a DM on Facebook or Instagram and I will send it over to you. I'll give you his email, um, his cell phone, all the above. Or you can you can email him directly, Travis at HouseSoldEasy.com. That's probably an easy way as well. But if you want his number, shoot me up a DM and I will get that to you this afternoon. All right. Look at that. We've already changed some of these campaigns, Kareen. Great work. We got a couple in South City, a couple in Farmington. Give it another minute or two and we'll have them all going into South City. And these properties that we uh, are calling on are just high equity leads, guys. They, they don't have any presumed motivation in terms of death, divorce, disease, job relocation, back taxes. These are all great lists to pull. The one that we're calling on right now is just high equity, right? So basically it has at least 40% equity in the property. And I believe we always select off market. I know that for a fact. I believe we also narrow the list down by any property owner that has owned the property for at least seven or maybe 10 years. I'm not exactly sure. Because if you pull a high equity list in a large area, you're gonna get a lot of leads. Like you're gonna maybe get 10, 15,000 leads. We like to kind of narrow that down to somewhere between two and 5,000. And we do that by saying, hey, we don't really wanna talk to anybody that just bought the property or just bought it a couple years ago. So they have to have owned the property for at least seven to 10 years. Uh, and they have to have a minimum equity of either 30 or 40%. Again, we kind of slide these numbers around depending on how big our list is. Um, but more is better, especially if you have the help of Kareen and her team helping you uh, with these cold calls. So this is, a, this is really great all around. All right, it looks like we got two dialers on. Six phones ringing. Three for South City, three for Farmington. And Korean, it's no rush by any means. I just know mm -hmm. that I'll be much more helpful on the South City leads, of course. Okay. And once we get another one connected, we're going to jump on in, guys. This is, this is it. This is simple. Don't overthink it, right? A lot of people reach out and they just say, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Well, just be a human, right? Do they own a property? Great. Do they want to sell it? Great. If not, move on. All right, Dana and Jane. Looks like we're on a call. Let's see if we can't connect with one of these. Sometimes you gotta do a refresh here. Looks like we got some questions that came in. Justin said, you ever have issues, voicemails drop working? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, softwares have bugs, all of them do. So sometimes you're gonna have issues. That's just the way it is. Personally, I haven't had any issues with them. Uh, is there a trial period for the VA service? No, there is not. Um, how do you get a hold of Kareen? You can fill out the form that's below this video and um, that form gets emailed to both me and her and then she will handle um, connecting you guys with these individuals. And she's got a couple ready to roll right now, it looks like. All right, we have one that's connected here for a minute. And it doesn't look like anybody's there. Maybe it's a voicemail. Oh, she ended it. All right, cool. Circling back. Uh, Blake says, David, do you use text blasting or direct mail or just cold calling? We do all the above. Um, so when we drive for dollars, we export those leads. We skip trace them. We cold text them. We SMS message those, those leads. Uh, and then we always send anywhere from one to three postcards when we are adding those leads. So that's just my approach when it comes to driving for dollars. When I am pulling leads off of batch or prop stream, I am not necessarily mailing those leads. We only mail our driving for dollars leads and we do quite a bit of it, uh, but we do text them and cold call them. So here's the thing guys, the leads are the cheapest part, right? The skip tracing is the most expensive part behind the labor, right? So you basically have, have a couple costs, right? You have generating the lead, you have the cost to skip trace that lead, and then you have the cost to of the hours basically uh, for an individual to reach out to, to the seller, right? Well, if I'm gonna spend you know, 500 to $1,000 skip tracing 
you know, three or 4,000 leads, uh, that's quite a lot of money that I'm going to be spending, right? So my goal is to call them and text them, basically try to do everything I can to reach them, to let them know that I'm interested in buying. And um, if they don't want us to call them anymore, great, we'll remove them, right? That just makes our life a lot easier. But sometimes people prefer phone calls. Sometimes they prefer text messages. So any way they want to they want us to communicate is what we're going to do. So it looks like Jane's got one. I'm not sure if she's connected or not. The number you called wasn't available. Okay. Good. No problem. Looks like Dana's actually on one as well. Let's see if we can't jump in on that one. Do a little refresh here. Whenever I'm pulling live streams and I got other people in on it, it sometimes slows things down, guys. But typically, everything works really smooth. Here we go. Well, the price, it really depends on the condition of the property. And just to let you know, we will cover all the closing costs and uh, we buy the property completely as is, okay? <laughs> Okay. okay, but um, do you have any price in mind or how much would you take for this property? I haven't really thought about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, not a problem. We will just run through the numbers and they'll send you the offer maybe tomorrow or later today. Will that be fine? Yeah. Okay, perfect. And just to make sure it is accurate, it has um, three bedrooms and two baths. Well, two and, and a half. half. Uh huh. Okay, three baths and two and a half baths. Okay. And uh, 2448 square footage, that's the property size, right? Pretty close. I'm using the batch yeah. dialer. Okay, pretty close. Thank you. And let me see, how long do you own this property, guys? Uh, it's been the family since 1989. Wow, 1989. Okay. And uh, since 1989, I believe um, you you happened to replace your roof. You know, just wanted to make sure there's no leak on it. No what? I mean, um, is how old is the roof? Do you still remember? The roof? Mm-hmm. We've replaced it... Uh, maybe 10 years ago 10 years ago okay thank you and is there a central air on the house yep central air perfect uh is it like 10 years old also or maybe more uh, i updated one of the units last year uh-huh i mean but last year there's, Sorry. No, there's no issues with anything uh-huh okay so central air is still good in a good condition Okay, so that's 10 years or maybe more, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. And let's say uh, we set you the offer tomorrow and uh, it works for you. How long are you willing to sell the property? Do you have any timeline? No. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, it will take about two to three months or maybe more. Uh, it should take me long if I sold that out. Okay, given that the property, I mean, given the price uh, is good, I mean, it works for you, right? Right. That's two to three months or maybe more, correct? Correct. Thank you. And um, is there any mortgage liens or back taxes on this property? There's a mortgage, huh? Uh huh. How many years um, do you still have left on this mortgage? Probably 20 something. 20 years more, okay. Do uh, you happen to know how much is the balance? Uh, about 160,000, 60 one, 160 to 165. Thank you so much. Okay, um, let me see. Uh, do you have any email? We can also send you an email. Yes. What's your yes. email? B I L L B O. Uh, 
67 at gmail.com. Is this correct? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. And I believe the property is not yet, you know, listed on the market or with a realtor, right? No. Okay. And uh, you're still leave, I mean, the property is still occupied right now, correct? Since oh, yeah. 19, let me see, 1989, right? Right. Thank you. Well, William, I think I have here the info that we need from now. I really appreciate your time, but what tends to be your reason you're, you're thinking about selling this property? Well, I'm thinking about selling my business too. Oh, uh-huh. So are you retiring? Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go to a warmer climate. <laughs> <laughs> I see, got it. Thank you. And um, oh, we are business. Uh, is that a commercial property? Yes, I have a plumbing co company. Plumbing company. And you're willing to, to sell the, this, uh, this is a commercial building, right? No, it's a residential building. Oh, residential building. And uh, are you also willing to hear an offer in this property? Residential building. Volume. Uh -huh. Yeah, do you have the address? Maybe we can, you know, I'll talk to my boss and uh, we'll try to do some research about it. But if we can, we can also send you the offer. Uh, the address? You already uh -huh. told me the address. I mean, 3542, uh, this is your uh, home address, right? Correct. Uh, what about the, your... Um, your, your business, I mean, you're, you're telling me that you're also willing to sell your business. I run my business out of my home, ma'am. Oh, okay, <laughs> got it, thank you. Well, William, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a lovely day, okay? Thank you. Thank you, have a good day. Awesome. Not bad, not bad. So this guy's got a house and maybe a business for sale, right? Didn't sound super motivated, that's okay, you know? It's to be honest, it, it's kind of rare that you come across a motivated seller right away on the phone, right? Again, we have to build relationships with these individuals that are looking to sell. That process takes time. Our average deal, four to six months. Now, do we get one, two, maybe three in a month where, hey, they're ready to sell. They got relocated for their job and they got to go or they inherited the property. Of course, guys, of course this happens, right? But the majority of our deals, I would say probably two thirds of the deals that we do every month, the lead was added into our CRM or into our system four to six months ago at a minimum, all right? Follow-up is the name of the game business. Follow-up, it's so incredibly important. All right, it looks like two online agents, three calls going out, one connected. Let's dive on in. Not letting me connect here. Let's do a refresh. That usually fixes it. But I'm pulling all this bandwidth from live streaming and chatting and everything else. Things get a little slow. I need to up my internet most likely here. We got a connection though. Sid, do you happen to have a property that is for sale? No. Uh, do you know anyone who's interested in selling their property? Not, not really, no. Um... If you know someone who's interested in selling your property, kindly please give us a call back, okay? Have a good day, thanks. Awesome. It's all about efforts, guys. Keeping those lines dialing. That's what matters here. So boom, she ended that. Three more just started populating. Constantly calling all day, every day. The help of, of you know two or three individuals that are working Tuesday through Saturday uh, generates leads. These leads then come over to us to be worked. And what we do when we get the leads in the system from our virtual assistants, it's actually quite simple. We uh, call those individuals up and we ask them if they, uh, if the information that we have is accurate. And then we just basically gauge their level of motivation. All right, now here's the thing. We're typically looking for individuals that we can buy houses from. That's the goal, right? We're looking for people that are motivated or are willing to you know, sell us a property at a discount. 
But if they're not ready to sell it at a discount or they don't have that level of motivation that we are looking for, we may have other tools in our belt, right? We carry around this big belt with us all day. And what does it have in it? Well, it has cash offers, all right? It also has the ability to help sellers that don't have equity or they're not, maybe it's impossible for them to give us a discount. Well, they still may need to sell. So those are listing leads, right? So in our belt, we have the ability to help individuals by listing those leads. If you aren't an agent, go meet one, make a friend with one. Odds are you probably know 10 people who are agents. They're a dime a dozen, right? Refer those leads to them, right? Figure out how they can pay you, all right? I'm not an agent. I don't want to get into the specifics of that, but if you work with your friends, I'm sure you can get creative, okay? Uh, so getting listings for your brokerage is an option. Also, lease options. I don't do a ton of lease options, but I have in the past. If you come across a really good deal, maybe there's a good lease option play. Maybe there's a subject to play, right? Maybe there's an owner financing play. It doesn't always have to be about somebody that's basically saying, yeah, I'll give you my property at 50 cents on the dollar. There's lots of ways to convert these leads that most people would refer to as trash leads into cash leads to get paid on them. Just don't have the mindset that you are going to get on a dialer for one or two hours and talk to 10 motivated sellers, guys. It doesn't work that way. This is a numbers game, all right? Everything in life that I've come across that had a ton of value wasn't just handed to me. I had to work really hard for it, right? So the cool thing though about this is once you come across a deal from these efforts, making seven, 10, 12, maybe $15,000 on a deal isn't crazy, right? So one deal essentially can help pay one of those cold callers for a whole year, maybe even two or three of them for a whole year, all right? So let's do some simple math here, right? I'm paying a caller 20 hours, a week times five dollars an hour that's a hundred dollars a week times that by let's say 50 weeks a year that's five grand so if you do one deal that makes you ten thousand you basically just paid a caller to work you to work for about two full years guys so there's lots of value in this now we like to bonus our callers if they're able to connect us with the seller that um you know has a deal for us and makes us money we are more than happy to send, you know, two, three, four hundred dollars as a bonus to that caller as well. What do you think that does when you send a bonus to a caller like that? That's typically only going to be making about a hundred dollars a week, right? You just basically gave them three or four weeks worth of pay. So highly encourage you to um, to bonus the people that are working for you guys or partner in, you know, bring them in on some sort of a partner split, you know, give them five or 10 percent of the deal as well. Again, it's just going to motivate them to work harder for you. All right. All right. Let's dive over to the chat. I know we got a couple things here that have popped up. Uh, let's see. Somebody says, do you use this with PropStream? Yes, we pull leads from PropStream. We use PropStream to run all of our comps. I have MLS access and I haven't logged in in a year. I just go to PropStream, guys. It's simple. You can pull comps and leads. So it's just, it's just kind of a no brainer. Um, we require all of our students, unless they're an agent and have MLS access already to get it. That's like the first software we have, uh, because if you don't have the ability to run comps, how are you going to know what an ARV is? Therefore, how are you going to use the MAO formula? Therefore, how are you going to make an offer that makes sense? You have to start by knowing what a property is worth. What are those comps? Uh, let's see here. How many skip trace properties do you think it would take max to get one deal? If I'm just started out cold calling, well, that's a loaded question uh, because it depends on your market. It depends on the list of leads that you're adding. And more importantly than those two things, those two are very, very pop or very valuable. But more importantly than that, how good at closing are you? Are you afraid to follow up? You're never going to get a lead. And I'm not saying that that's you, the person that asked this question here. However, you got to get good at closing. You got to get good at talking to people. You got to get comfortable uh, running appointments and making offers to people and being told, no, that offer is too low. Okay. One of my favorite things is if your offer isn't a little bit embarrassing to make, it's too high. All right. It doesn't mean that you can only accept that initial offer by all means, but if your offer isn't low, 
and it's you know kind of hard for you to make that offer, then you're offering way too much. Here's the thing. You can always come up, right? Getting somebody down is a whole different ballgame. So start low, anchor low. Great question. Uh, let's see. Laureen said, David, do you recommend Mojo or Batch Dialer? Trying to weigh my options here. They're both great services. I prefer Batch. Batch has um, a lot of good services, and I've moved over to them just because it makes it simple to push leads from Batch Lead Stacker uh, or Batch Leads to uh, Batch Dialer um, and or Batch Driven. Um, and then Batch Leads is where we do our SMS. So I prefer it. I think it's I think these guys that uh, are that are running all these things are top notch individuals. And I think that they are are really working hard every day to make it better. So personally, I like Batch Dialer. Um, I've used Mojo a lot and it's a good dialer too, by all means. Uh, Mark says, Dave, you said you don't like leaving voicemails, right? You'd rather catch people on the phone, not leave a message. Well, yes and no. That, that's a loaded question too, Mark. That's okay. Here's the thing. I like leaving voicemails, right? But I don't want to up my dialers to 10 lines at a time versus three because the goal is to get people on the phone, not to leave voicemails. Voicemails are just extra. Like, why not? Right. But if I if I'm dialing 10 lines at a time and two or three people answer, that's two or three opportunities that we would have had to talk to them that we now have to then have them call us back or we have to call them back. Again, the goal is to get somebody on the phone. So by leaving a voicemail, that may help you get them on the phone at a later time. Again, I'm not against dropping voicemails. We do it, but I don't, but I am kind of against having five, seven, ten dialers at the same time because it defeats the purpose of really what we're trying to do. So what is that? We're trying to get people on the phone make friends with them, figure out if they're motivated. If they are, we're going to set an appointment right away. All right. So voicemails are great, but that shouldn't be the goal here. If, the, if that was the goal, just go use ringless voicemail. I am not a fan of ringless voicemail. I would prefer the phone to actually ring and then them get the voicemail. People know what ringless voicemails are. So with that being said, great question. Um, keep your lines, I would say below four. If you want to use two or three, we typically use three. And hey, look at this. It looks like Jane connected. Let's jump in. But that's a great question. All right, I'm going to do a refresh. Sometimes when I click off this thing, it wants me to refresh it. Uh, let's see here. We'll look at a couple questions here while we're trying to do this as well. Uh, Blake says, how much does it cost to pull a list of 2,000 to 5,000 numbers and skip trace them? So on PropStream, you get 10,000 exports, Blake, uh, per calendar month right? So you don't have to pay anything to export up to 10,000 leads with your subscription, which is about hundred bucks a month. Uh, but again, I use PropStream for comps. That's the main thing. We pull leads too. So it's like, I'm going to be able to use it for comps, but also I can pull up 10,000 leads a month. It's included kind of a no brainer. Batch has got a similar thing. You can actually go pull 5,000 leads at Batch leads uh, for free. Actually, if you haven't already used that, there's, I can send you over a free trial link that actually includes it. Let's see what Jane's got. Um, how can you reach him? I don't know, but I'm sure if he was going to sell this place, I'd know about it. <laughs> okay. But how about you? Do you have any other property you might consider selling? Hey, Annie. Not at this time. What is uh, currently holding you back? From selling? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, crappy market? Crappy market. Market's, Market's never been better. Uh, ever. <laughs> oh, may I know um, what is um, your time frame? I mean, um, what do you want to sell your property? <sighs> well, for one, it's commercial property, not residential. It doesn't matter. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, but where is it located? In Blue Island, Illinois. Oh, in Illinois. Do you have um, property here in Missouri? Not anymore. Oh, not anymore. Okay. Uh, do you have um, relatives who's interested in selling their property? No. Okay. You know what? Um, if, if you're, if you have that guys um, in Illinois, a friend or anyone who's in. Let's go ahead and refresh that. So. 
she's going to work that one. That's perfect, guys. We got some questions here that I want to jump on into. And if we get another one that pops up here, of course, we're going to jump into that as well here. So uh, since sin a fan, I can't say that. Somebody <laughs> says, how many skip trace properties do you think it will take max to get one deal if I'm just starting cold calling? So if you put in the time, right, and you put in four hours a day, three to five days a week, right, you should be able to get a deal in, I would say, two months or less. Right. But here's the coolest part about that. Right. When you do that, you are adding in anywhere from, you know, one to could be could be as many as 10 leads a day into your system. So over the course of, like, let's say, one to two months, let's be let's, let's not be too optimistic. here. Let's say two months. Right. You should be able to close one within two months. Right. But you've added all these leads into your CRM in the meantime. So just because you only got one done in two months doesn't mean that that's going to be the same next two months. That's the coolest part about this business is it actually snowballs, right? So leads take time to work. You got to work them, all right? Ours, they take four to six months on average. So if you get a, a deal on that second month, by that time, you should have anywhere from 200 to 1,000 leads added into your system that are set on some sort of a follow-up. You're either calling those individuals back um, every week or every other week, or maybe even monthly. We have individuals in our system that we set a callback for an entire year out. They have no interest in selling today, but we know they own the property. We know their name. We know their phone number. Why wouldn't we follow up with them in a year? Hey, we talked to you a year ago about this house you got over on South Grand. You know, just following up. Anything change and you sell it right away, we're still buying in the area, guys. So definitely keep that in mind. Great question. Um, it's all about working the leads, right? One to two months, you should be able to come across a deal. You really should. If you're hustling, if you're putting in the time and you're dialing or you bring on one of Kareen's people here that can help you with that. All right. Great question. Looks like right at the moment here, we got six lines going out, two online agents, six active calls. You can see this in your dashboard here. Guys, again, if you want to check this out, go check out batchdialer.com forward slash Dave right down below. Seven day free trial. Take advantage of it. You get unlimited calling in that trial. There's really no reason that you shouldn't at least test this out. If you don't have the money to afford a virtual assistant, fine, do it yourself. No big deal. Um, I prefer to outsource it because it allows me to do what I like to do, which is get out in the field and look at the properties and talk to the sellers and make friends, right? That's really what I like to do. A lot of people outsource the running of the appointments first, not me. That's what I, where I shine. I like getting out. I like looking at them. And I'm not just looking for wholesales, right? I buy everything that makes sense and I wholesale everything else. So really for me, it's more about, hey, let's figure out where we can find that next rental property or where we can find that next really good fix and flip opportunity. And if we come across a deal in the, in the meantime that maybe has a 10 or 15K spread on it, let's go wholesale it and make a few thousand in the process. Love it. Great question. All right, Jane, she connected again. Let's go. Oh, that one didn't let me. It ended right there. That's okay. No problem. All right, jumping over to the comments. Mark says, thanks, Dave. I'm going to implement that today. Hell yeah, Mark. Get it, buddy. Get it. Uh, let's see here. We got David. Why don't you stack high quality, high equity with pre-foreclosure motivation lists? Just pulling high equity is why your return on investment is not as strong per 1,000. Explain. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Brian. Um, we already hit, hit pre-foreclosures recently, right? So what we're doing right now, the market's really hot. I'm not really trying to narrow in my, my leads to individuals that are presumed to have the highest amount of motivation. Um, and the reason is this, those are a narrow pool of leads and we do hit those as well. My goal is to fill my CRM up with 10,000 leads that we can start following up with because that's where the deals get done, right? So don't always think that you need to chase those highest level of motivation. Also, the competition is going to be the highest in the niche lists, right? How many people do you think are just literally calling high equity individuals like we are right now that have owned the property for a long time? Again, we don't necessarily think we're going to come across a motivated seller in the next hour, 
but we're for damn sure going to be able to add anywhere from two to 10 leads in the system of somebody that has interest in selling. And then we're going to work them and we're going to justify the fact that we have a ton of value to provide. We are the liquidity makers, guys. That's all real estate investors really do, right? Is they come in and they provide convenience in exchange for a discount. If we didn't want a discount, then we would be called real estate speculators, right? But we're not. We're investors. We make our money when we buy. Great question. Uh, you can list stack all you want. The only downside to that is it's going to limit the number of leads. You know, we're adding in anywhere from five to 10,000 leads into the system at a time. And people that are on the high equity list, right? They may also be on that pre foreclosure list. That's the coolest part about not stacking. You may have people that are having other issues, but you're going to weed out everybody else if you're just looking for those two or three or four things, right? So what we do on every list is we take off the on markets, no matter what, and we typically don't market to people that have less than 30% equity. If we wanted to do other things, we could add those in. One of the things I like to do is I like to basically reduce properties that have a, a square footage of less than like 750 or 800 square foot, just because usually those properties are just harder, right? They're less likely a cash buyer is going to want to jump on that. Um, personally, they're going to be lower rent. So if I was to buy something like that as a rental, that's only 600 square foot. I'm not going to be able to get a good rent on that versus an 850, 900 square foot property. And also the retail buyers for properties that are 600 square foot are going to be lower. So I typically weed out those properties and go for six, 750 to 800 at a minimum. And it just kind of varies. All right. Let's see if we can't jump on. Listen, to Jane here. She's on a call. Kareen, we can bring you back here. There you are. Hey. All right. Hang with me. I'm learning how to use this thing still. <laughs> All right. We got you here. We got you. All right. Jane's on one. Let's pop in and listen. Six, second selling your property. South City. I knew somebody I'd buy it myself. Oh, I see. Okay. Understand. Um, thank you so much. Have a good day. Mm. All right. Guy wasn't motivated, but that's okay. You're going to get a lot of that, guys. This is a numbers game. I can't stress this enough, right? You're going to have to make a lot of calls, but having Kareen and her folks is going to make it really, really easy for you guys. All right. Let's see. we got a couple other things. Giving me a lot of duplicates here. How do you get 10,000 leads? BY's video agency says uh, you can get 10,000 leads a month, actually, from PropStream. Batch also gives you 5,000 leads for free when you sign up. Um, so those two places right there. I used to buy my leads from ListSource, uh, but they're like three or four cents a pop, and you can get them for a penny, basically, over at Batch and or PropStream. So it's just kind of one of those things. I also get my leads from softwares that I'm already using other products in. So I'm not like going to PropStream just for leads. I go to PropStream actually for my comps and my data, but I get leads as well. So again, two birds, one stone. Uh, Brian says, thanks, David. Great answer. My pleasure, guys. My pleasure. Happy to help. Um, sometimes the calls, they're a little slow, but either way, voicemails are getting dropped. Numbers are being dialed, right? So don't be disappointed if we're not, uh, you know, talking to uh, hundreds of people or leaving hundreds of voicemails. And uh, that's just the name of the game. Kareen, what are the hours of the of the, the the assistants that we have today? Do you know? Are they all stopping at I, two? Uh, uh, most of them are working from 9 a.m. to 1 or 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Perfect. Yeah, because most some of the um, most of them have you know client in the afternoon, so they sure. choose to work in the morning. Perfect. All right, just to give you a heads up, um, David, I already received three application for VA. Perfect. Great. Yeah. Let's, let's try to place some virtual assistance for these folks. 
That's yeah. what it's all about, you know? Yeah, thank you. Trying to help help out everybody here. I want to be able to make the individuals that are watching that have interest in the virtual assistants, I want to make their time be used out in the field. That's the whole point, right? Let's let's bring in these assistants to help you guys with the heavy lifting. And then you can then talk to the individuals that have interest in selling and go run those appointments and spend your time on the activities that are really going to drive home the sales, right? Love that. I love that. And Kareen has got people standing by. She's been a huge help for us. Kareen, how long have we been working together? Uh, we worked last uh, since August or July, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Yeah, so we're going on like six or seven months at this point. And yes. uh, I have been nothing but happy with you guys. You guys are great. And it's funny because yeah. when we first started, we were over on the smartphone dialer. And yeah. then we moved over to Batch. We've been, you guys have been great pushing leads into Touch, REI Touch, as well as Podio. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple different CRMs for just a couple different reasons. But all in all, you guys have done really, really well. And I'm excited to help yeah. other investors out there. Yeah, with you, Kareen, so we can get them get them dialing just like we are, so they can focus their time and energies on those activities that are gonna you know make the most sense for them. Yeah, so, so they can focus more on you know talking to the hot leads. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, and it's a win win as well. You know. Yes. One thing I like about your people is they always have good energy, right? Yeah, There's they are. And hopping on a cold calling session. And the individual that's, you know, on the line when they answer is just like, hey, this is Dave. Do you, own a, do you own a house? Like nobody wants to talk to that guy, right? So you got to have good energy. Yes. All right. Let's see if we can't connect. Looks like Jane's on a call. I need to just keep my browser over here because when I switch off of it, it's giving me trouble here. All right, Jane, let's see if we can... Anytime after five. Okay, let me call you back. Thank you so much. Hey. Thank you. You too. Bye. Hey, it looks like uh, she got somebody that's interested in talking, just not right now. So cool. Create a note, call them back. Let's see if we can connect on Dana's. That one ended. Okay, no problem. Three lines going out. Rapid fire, guys, all day long, all day, every day, Tuesday through Saturday. We got three people working shifts, 20 hours a week. That's 20, 40, that's 60 hours a week of cold calling. And each hour that they're doing it, they are calling out hundreds of people because there's three lines going each at a time. All right. Check out this free trial, guys. I highly encourage it batchdialer.com forward slash Dave, seven days, free trial offer. And if you guys are looking for a virtual assistant, Kareen is who I use. I'm not hiding, I'm not holding back. Kareen and I have been working together for about six months at this point. And- I think I've been months, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yep. And she yeah. is doing great for us here. So, how do I change this thing? <laughs> I think I need to do it like that. No, that's not it. It's not letting me. It's not cooperating with me. That's okay. No problem. No problem. This is what matters right here anyway, Kareem. We can hear you. Um, so let's see here. Let's jump on over to our comments. What do we got? You got anything new coming in? I found a bunch of vacant houses while I was driving, and I'm texting out today. Hell yeah. That is what it is all about. Kareen, I had somebody this morning send me a message uh -huh. that said, hey, Dave, I'm driving for dollars and I'm not having luck connecting with sellers. And my response was, how are you driving for dollars? Are you going out finding properties that are distressed and in real time, skip tracing and calling them or in real time, skip tracing and texting them or in real time, setting a postcard to go to them that has your name and number on it. And they said, no, I'm taking it back. And I said, that's your problem right there. That's your disconnect. You're taking it back to the house and then you don't do anything with it. Right. And they were like, yeah, you know, sometimes that happens. And I'm like, well, let's prevent that from happening. 
And now when you're out in the field, the, the cost of skip tracing has been drove down so cheap. You're talking 12 to 15 cents a pop, right? Yes. So for a dollar, you can go skip trace like six or seven people, right? For $10, that's 60, 70 people. So go out and spend $10 driving around, find the most dilapidated houses there are. Ones that have tarps on the roofs, assuming you're cold calling, right? Now, the cool thing is, is once you get that data, you can pull it out of those apps. You know, Batch Driven is one of my favorite driving for dollars app. We also use Deal Machine. I use them both. I'm just a nerd and I like these softwares, right? But once you do this in the software and you skip trace them there, you can export all that data. Throw that data into the dialer. Throw it into another software, whatever you want. But hit these individuals with calls. Hit them with text. Marketing is the name of the game, guys. It's all about marketing. And it is a marketing business, right? Um, a lot of people reach out, literally, a couple a day. Say, Dave, hey, I'm interested in getting in, into the game. You know, wh what do I need to start doing? And I say, my answer is the same every time. Start marketing. Doesn't matter what you do. Doesn't matter if you're cold calling. Doesn't matter if you are uh, driving for dollars. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Just do something. Get started. This is a marketing business. And if you are not marketing, how do you expect sellers to get a hold of you? They're not just going to show up on your door. It just doesn't work that way. You have to reach out to them. All right. It looks like we got two voicemail systems going. One answered. And then we have four ringing. We do have one that connected. Jane is on fire today. Oh, that one just ended. No big deal. It's probably a voicemail. But she's always been good. That's really like Jane. I like the team that we have, Kareem. We got a good team. They always have good energy. And they're just polite. You know, and, and here's the thing. Your callers, guys, they don't need to be trained in real estate at all. They really don't even really need to be trained in your market. As long as you give them the leads that you want them to call, right? Their job is to basically make a friend and determine if there's any level of motivation there. That's it. That's the entire job. I don't have my, my virtual assistants, especially my cold callers, running comps. I don't have them making offers. Now, if you want to do that, that's great. You can do that. But again, we got a lot of tools in our belt. So if I don't want to make somebody a low offer and then lose the ability to get the listing or lose the ability to maybe work an owner finance deal with that individual, right? So their job is literally just find individuals that have any interest at all, right? So that means that some of the leads that come over in the system aren't going to be good at all. No problem though. I'd rather have those leads in the system to where myself and my team can now call and follow with those people because think about it. If the callers are going to do a 20 hour a week shift, that's 20 hours of time on the cold calling side. That's all cold, right? But if they add three leads, a, you know, a week or three leads a day in, that's 15 leads. I can get through 15 leads in like five or 10 minutes by calling those individuals, seeing if they have interest, seeing if I can help them in other ways. Do they need us to send out a listing agent? You know, how bad do they need to sell? Sometimes we just go out to individuals or even talk to them on the phone and we just help them. We just say, hey, you know, you're not going to like our offer. It's going to be way low. But, you know, if you spend, you know, three or four thousand bucks painting this property and putting new carpet in it, you're going to get 20 grand more. And people love that. They're like, wow, thanks for the advice. You know, so our job is to just provide value. And sometimes that means coaching a seller on how they can better their own house or financial circumstances, guys. All right, Jane, looks like she's on one. Let's listen in. I'm not moving. Oh, I understand. Um, do you know anyone who's interested in selling their property or interested in cash offer? No, no, no. I've been. All right, not interested. No problem. She's making a friend. That's all that matters, right? She's asking if he knows anybody else that's interested and um, just making a friend. That's it. That's all there is to it. But I'm going to leave her be on that one. Looks like we have an, an answering machine detected on this other one. And when she's on, it's going to stop calling too. So if you're not familiar with how these auto dialers work, it's only going to dial three lines until it connects with somebody. And then it's going to pause it, right? 
but we have two agents online right now, as you can see. So there should be a total of six of these uh, calls being made at the same time. You can also click here and you can see the recent contacts, guys, and you can see the call result, right? So if there was, you know, an answer, not interested, if you got an answer machine, so on and so forth, you can click here and you can see your campaigns. So these are the two that we're working right now. And dials, looks like we've made a thousand dials. This is just today, right? Today's the 28th. We've made a thousand dials already this morning since 9 a.m. on this one campaign and over 600 on this other one. And then it's gonna show you how many of them answered. So you have all this data, which is really cool. You can also monitor your agents. I got Jane, Dana, and Rochelle um, as my three agents right now, right? And you can see how much time they were on calls, how much time they were prepping or after the calls. And then you can see the actual numbers. So each of my dialers has two numbers. Um, and I do that just because sometimes numbers will go bad or, or whatnot. So we'll recycle those numbers, but I haven't needed to, um, which is actually kind of nice. Dana and Jane are on calls. Uh-oh, that one ended, no problem. Let's see if we can't listen to this one. Six, I'm sorry, um, uh, I'm sorry, John. Um, this is Jane from Household Easy, and I was calling about a party. I believe you own a 3445, uh, 3455, rather. Holiday at the St. Louis. I don't own any property. Um, is this John Williams? This is John Williams, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, no problem. He doesn't own a property, but she's going to go ahead and she's going to ask if he knows of anybody else that has a property that they're looking to sell. Again, this is something that we do on every call, guys. Not every individual is going to know an individual that's looking to sell. In fact, it may only be one in 100, may only be one in 300, but we ask regardless, right? Because sometimes people do. Sometimes they will say, yeah, my aunt is actually, you know, looking uh, to sell her property right now, or my brother or my cousin, like people know people guys that that's basically us, you know, having our cold callers just do a little form of networking at the same time, you know, as they are calling. Now, another thing is sometimes people will want to, um, pass the number along. So we'll just give them our number and then they can pass it along. Hmm. Who did I click on Jane? I think that one ended. Let's go to Dana. Hmm. We're actually buying some properties in the area right now. Okay. Yeah, I would be interested in hearing an offer. Uh -huh. okay. Boom. Well, we just want you know. You know <laughs> Doesn't mean she's motivated, though, guys. That's the thing. Don't get overly excited. All right. I hope you're one of the owners. But Dana is going to get the information. Yes. She's going to drop I'll it into the CRM, back. but she's going to tag and, uh, myself. And uh, Travis, my acquisitions so manager. Do you have any bull price here or price in mind? 150. 150. Okay. And this is still flexible or negotiable, maybe? Yeah, I'm not sure I want to sell it. So she's not motivated, at least today. Is this correct? Uh huh. Okay. Well, let me see. And uh, have you done any major remodels to the kitchen or bathroom in the last? Well, here's the thing she's interested, guys. No. So just because well, she's not bathroom. interested today, let me mute this okay. for a second. Just because she's not interested let today doesn't mean that she won't be in two, three, four car. months, right? Two bedrooms and two baths. Is this right? Yes. Two mm -hmm. bedrooms and two baths. And 1294 square feet. That's the property size. Yes. Okay. So uh, one of the bathrooms, what about in the kitchen? Well, it was all remodeled 10 years ago when I bought it. Oh, okay. And there are pictures online. If you look at it for rent on Zillow, I have, I have it up for rent. Yeah, I have it up for rent right now. I just don't have anyone in it. So I was thinking about possibly listing it for sale. I just haven't decided yet. Oh, okay. I see. I'm actually having the bill. And this is really a great place, though. And I think uh, this is one of the properties that we're looking for. And may I know your name, sorry? Your first name? Emily. Emily. Okay. This Emily, um, Karine, can you hear that? I owned this property 10 years ago, right? Get the volume up enough? Uh, yeah. It's like cool. two persons speaking at the same time. Uh, no. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. It, it's both. So it is currently occupied, right? Well, by me. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you. I think you're looking for uh, a rancher right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
And uh, let me see. Let's say we can. Call she occupies it, but she's looking for a renter, guys. Uh, are you Seems like some there could be some motivation there to me. Or you have. Now we won't know until we go no, meet her, can, of course. Can. No, I can offer one. I just have, like I said, I just haven't decided. Yeah, do uh, you think we'll take for about thirty days? You know. The closing would cost take thirty days. Yeah, I mean, you still need to, you know, to, to think up to think about it, right? Do you think it will take like eight, um, one to thirty days before you can sell it? Let's say we can give you one fifty thousand dollars, and it works for you. Well, if I would have to talk it over with my husband, uh, but yeah. like, it's ready. I could sell it tomorrow if I wanted to. I just go get yeah. my stuff out of there. Okay, um, then you I talk to your husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm in a situation where like I'm really attached to that property and I want to keep it in my family and have a place to go downtown. And I also work full time and I have two small children mm -hmm. and it's not like set up for kids. And I also don't want to get a real her and I just don't want to spend a lot of time on it. Oh, so I like that conversation, guys. So this is a good one here. It's not I super motivated. Yeah, the market's not yeah. she doesn't want a realtor. It's not set up for kids, and she has kids. I mean, she's telling us her motivations right here, which is great. I would consider selling it because I have a friend in that building who just sold her condo. So this is a condo too. I'm definitely open for offers. So Perfect. Let's get her an offer. That's all that matters, guys. That's all that matters. All right, I'm gonna let her finish that call. Dana's doing great today. Uh, Dion said, "Good afternoon. When you first got started grinding in the business." What time are you getting started and how did you plan out your day? Um, that's a great question. And all day, every day. That's 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 who I am. That's what I do. Like I am an investor. I'm looking to buy properties all day, every day. So uh, what time do I get started every day? I mean, typically it's somewhere between 7.30 and 9. Um, I don't use an alarm clock, so I wake up when I wake up. And some days it's early, some days it's 5.30, some days it's 9, right? So I just wake up, I just start working, right? That's kind of how I operate. Um, and how did you plan out your day? I plan out my day with the activities that are going to make me the most money. I try to do those first, right? So if I have appointments that I need to run, then that's the top of the list. I'm going to get out, I'm going to run those appointments. If I have offers that I had recently sent out the last, you know, yesterday or the last couple of days that I haven't heard back from, the next thing on the list would be call those individuals, ask them if they receive my offer, ask if they have any questions about my offer and you know, try to get a property under contract or set another appointment, right? Whatever it may be. Um, next, I'm gonna look at my marketing, right? If you're not doing marketing, it's gonna be very difficult to set appointments and or send offers. So all of these things matter, but the highest and best uses of my time are actually sending the offers and running the appointments. Um, so next I'm going to look at the marketing. Are we having marketing going out? Do we need more leads? Do we have enough leads? Do we have enough people calling and texting those leads? All that stuff matters. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. And after that, I am going to basically, uh, do what I can to help out with any of those efforts. Does anybody else have a deal in my organization that they have questions about? Do they need me to go jump in the car and get pictures? You know, I, I don't do a ton of virtual wholesaling. We do a little. Um, but the thing is, is I'm an investor looking for active deals in my market that I can buy to rehab or to rent. That's the goal for me, right? However, we typically wholesale five to 10 deals a month because we come across all these other leads that we don't necessarily want to rehab or own as rentals. But they're still leads and they're still deals. And as long as we can get enough meat on the bone, um, to give somebody else the deal and make a little bit, then we're going to wholesale, right? So wholesaling is like one of my favorite things, but I don't lead with that. I actually lead as, hey, I'm going to be the buyer and I want to see if this is going to work for me and my company. And if it doesn't work, guess what? I got tons of partners, thousands of them, right? And that's who I wholesale my deals to, would be my partners that are looking for those deals in my neighborhood. All right, Dion says, like, looks like that message was just copied here. It looks like I'm getting double messages, but hey, no big deal. No big deal. All right, back over to Batch Dialer. Automatic message was dropping. We got three lines ringing. One active campaign. We've had 732 missed calls, 61 abandoned, 
We have two agents paused. So we just have one agent working right now. She's ringing three lines at the same time. Our dialing ratio, we're only through 9% of the campaign today. And we've had an hour and 44 minutes total today on the phone. That's our actual talking time. Now that's over three agents since 9 a.m. It's 12, 10 central, central time where we're at. So that's three hours times three people. It's about nine hours of calling already today, guys. Pretty awesome. Karina, if you got to jump off or do something else, by all means, you're not required to be here. Oh, yeah, sure. I need to but, go. But I love having you. Absolutely. And if you got anything right. you want to add at any time, jump on okay. in. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. We'll talk to you soon, Karina. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Karina's the best, guys. If you are looking for callers, Kareen is who manages them. She is the, basically has the virtual assistant company that I have hired. And um, as a thank you to her, she's always looking to bring on more clients. So I told her, hey, you know, I'd be happy to promote your business for you. Uh, because again, the goal for me is to have the callers help us. They want to, I'm going to have them do all of my heavy lifting, right? And then once they find me those sellers that have interest in selling, um, hopefully the motivated ones, of course, but any seller is really what I'm looking for. Uh, then my team, myself, my partner, Mike, Travis, our acquisitions guy and partner, um, will be making those calls. And we have some other people that work with us as well, depending on the area of town. Um, if you know anything about me, I'm out of St. Louis, Missouri, and I don't typically do deals outside of about a 20 or 30 minute drive from where I live. Reason being is I like to get eyes on my deals. Um, and if it's a 45 minute drive, it's just typically, unless it's a home run, it's uh, it's just not really in my ballpark. It's not something I'm really looking forward to or excited. Also, you got to think my buyers are all located um, within a 20 to 30 minute drive, typically not all, most um, as well. So if I'm going out into the boonies to look for a property you know, I'm going to have a tough time selling that, assuming I'm wholesaling it, right? So I like to just kind of keep my marketing focused on 20 to 30 minute drive from the city center. And I basically live right in the middle of St. Louis. So I can get anywhere within 20 or 30 minutes. And if it's beyond 20 or 30 minutes, again, it's probably out in the country, right? It's probably in an area that probably doesn't have uh, the best pool of buyers. All right, looks like Dion's messages is coming over two or three times. I don't know what's going on with my restream here today, but doesn't matter. All right, we got one agent on, one agent pause. Three lines are dialing, boom, all day, every day, guys. Basically, from nine to six, we have at least one person on the clock, and we dial Tuesday through Saturday. I don't like dialing on Sundays, people get upset. And personally, I don't like to work all that hard on Mondays, nor do I want my team working all that hard. Mondays are just kind of those days, right? So we do Tuesday through Saturday, but it's a good strategy because people sometimes are too busy on the weekdays to answer. So sometimes we'll do our follow-up campaigns. Basically, we'll call the people that we can't get a hold of Tuesday through Friday over on our Saturday, right? So there's a lot of, a lot of little tips and tricks right there with that particular strategy. Guys, if you have any questions about anything that we're doing here today, drop a comment. Let me know where you're watching from as well. I'm always curious to see where everybody's watching from. And as soon as we have one of our virtual assistants connect, we're going to jump on and listen. Man, it looks cold outside today. It's like 25 degrees this morning when I woke up. All right, three lines dialing. Two agents are online. We got three new calls going out, two cell phones, one landline. These are South City high equity leads. You can also see on the right side the duration of the actual call. And there's in the settings of the campaigns when you add these leads in, you can actually uh, configure that duration. So how long do you want it to go before it times out? How long do you want it to go before it hangs up if it doesn't get a voicemail, so on and so forth? I believe we have all of ours set to like maybe 30 seconds. So if it doesn't get an answering machine within 30 seconds, it's probably a bad number or a number that doesn't have one. So it just it just hangs that up. Again, there's lots of little things that you can configure 
over in your campaigns when you're adding those to your system here. All right, three calls are ringing. Let's see if we can't get uh, a couple more people on the line here. I'm going to probably go till about 1 p.m. today, guys. It's 12.15, so that's another 45 minutes. And uh, the cool thing is, though, is we've already witnessed our callers connect with several people. And some of these people were interested in selling. They, they didn't necessarily motivate it. They weren't like jumping like, oh, I need to sell it right away. But again, that's rare. Typically, you can discover motivation once you make a friend with that person. So some of the best conversations that I have are when somebody says, yeah, I'm interested in selling. You know, maybe they have a motivation. You know, maybe they say I'm getting relocated for a job for the most part. And then when I go out and I meet them and I'm in the field walking that property with that individual, then at that point, they may decide to tell me that they're getting divorced too or something like that. Not always, of course, but sometimes when you're out in the field and you make a friend, you can also expose some of these other motivations, right? But if I never went and ran that appointment from the beginning, how would I have ever know, how would I ever know that I wouldn't, right? So that's why it's always important just get out in the field and make a friend. I don't look at myself as being extra good at sales or being a sales guru. But what I am good at doing is talking to people and listening and, and asking why they need to sell and then telling them how we can help them, right? People are people. So treat them like people, just make a friend. And really that's gotten me a long way in this business. You know, there's all these little things that you can do to increase your chances of getting a sale. At the top of that list, in my opinion, number one would be just to make a friend. All right. Looks like Jane's on a call. Let's see if we can't jump in and listen to Jane's call. There it is. There it goes. Definitely new. Okay. What are you, what are you calling about? Um, I'm calling today because I noticed that your uh, property is in Zillow. Is what? Is listed in Zillow. I don't, I'm having trouble hearing you. So I don't know what's going on. What do you need? How can I help you? I'm calling to see if you're interested in selling it. Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. So I'll send me whatever you want. Thank you. So that guy was just not having it and that's okay. That happens guys. Um, again, this is a numbers game. You like the call. Sometimes people are going to tell you to kick rocks and they're going to tell you to F off. And that's just part of the game, right? Now the great part about vert about having the virtual assistants is they're going to do the heavy lifting for you guys. They're going to be the ones on the phones, weeding through all of these individuals, trying to find the ones that are interested in selling for one and two, obviously the ones that are interested in selling, but are also motivated, right? So that's why I really love having the team because they can do this all day while I'm in the office working on other deals or looking at rehabs or rentals or more importantly, running appointments for deals that we're looking to buy uh, and making friends out in the field or sending offers, right? All of the above. So it looks like Dana's got one. Boom. Yeah. And I'm calling with regards to the property. I believe you own at 2141. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin, we wanted to know if you are interested in hearing an offer on this property. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but do you have other properties you might be interested in selling? I have done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I really appreciate your time. That's all right. Again, numbers game, guys. Numbers game. Let the virtual assistants do the heavy lifting for you. Dana, Jane, Rochelle, all three of the girls that we got working for us, they're, they're hardworking. They have great energy. They're happy to be dialing. That's the most important part is you got to have good energy on these calls, right? And that's the reason that, um, that we are working with those three girls because they have good energy. To me, that's more important than anything else, right? They don't have to be trained in real estate. They don't have to be trained in the neighborhood uh, that you're calling in. All that stuff's kind of irrelevant. They're just there to get names, phone numbers, addresses of individuals that have interest. And then from there, we can call 
and we can figure out if we can help them or at the very minimum, give them a little piece of advice about how they can maybe move their property um, and get it sold, right? Either way. So boom, look at this. Jane and Dana both on calls, loving it. Hello? Yes, hello? Yes, hello. Do you hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you now. Uh, again, my name is Jane from Household Easy, and I'm calling in regards to your property at 2865 Texas Avenue, St. Louis. Hey, you got the wrong, you got the wrong number there. Is this Latonia Austin? He hung up. No problem. We got two other lines dialing out right now. Two agents on. One looks like she's paused temporarily. Boom. Not anymore. Two agents on. Just like that, guys. Six lines being dialed. Now, you also got to notice that these are going to be dropping voicemails as well. So earlier, I think Mark had asked a question about, you know, why not do like 10 lines at once? It's just going to drop more voicemails. Yeah, it is. True. By all means. However, the goal isn't to drop voicemails. It's to connect with people. The voicemails is icing on the cake, right? The goal here is to connect with people, get them on the phone and communicate with them. Ask them if they are the owner, ask them if they have interest in selling. Sometimes we'll get people on the phone that say, yeah, I'm the owner and I don't want to sell right now, but call me back in six months. I may want to call them. Boom, lead added to the system. And really that's what this cold calling efforts are all about. I think a lot of people kind of get this confused. You know, obviously we come across motivated sellers right away, but it's rare. All right. I don't want people to think that they're going to be able to just start cold calling and go talk to 10 sellers that are motivated right away. That's super rare, right? We'll maybe come across somebody once a week or once every other week, right? But what we are doing is we are adding these leads into the system of people that have interest in selling, right? And we are then determining if that level of motivation is worth following up. And nine times out of 10, it is. And again, sometimes we'll call them the next week or even two or three weeks out. Sometimes we will not call them for six months to a year, right? I would say that we probably have four, maybe 5,000 leads in our system right now that are tasked to call or follow up with them in a year, literally, because they didn't have motivation to sell to us today, right? But we know their name, we know their address, and we know their phone number. So why not call them back at a later time? Sometimes they'll even tell us, hey, call me in a year. I may be interested in selling at that point. Cool. Adding them to the system, just like that. Got to keep it simple. All right, guys, we have Jane on a call. Let's see if we can't listen in on that one as well here. Looks like it ended, no big deal. Sometimes it'll show on call between the time of them click and drop a voicemail from when it actually answers. Um, sometimes the system will do it for you. Again, these guys are working on building the system out every day, making it better and better. Um, but the ability to listen in is probably one of my favorite tools, especially if you're gonna be bringing assistance on guys. Um, the barge in tool, um, is another great tool. I don't use that tool as much, but sometimes if I'm monitoring at the office, I'll have this open right on a, on a computer that's just kind of over in the corner and I'll see it. And if I see somebody that's on a call for four or five minutes, I'll go listen in. And then, Hey, if it's somebody that's motivated and they're literally like, Hey, I'm here now, right? I'm at the house now. Can you come over now? Or can you come over tomorrow morning? Boom. Perfect opportunity to barge in and just say, Hey, this is Dave. I was over listening your call with Jane or Rochelle here. And I'm actually going to be in the neighborhood tomorrow. Would love to meet you, right? So the barge feature is a really, really cool feature as well, guys. Definitely don't want you to overlook that feature. Dana on a call. Boom. It ended. Must have been a voicemail. No big deal. Guys, if you are watching, check it out. Seven-day free trial. Batchdialer.com forward slash Dave. Not only do you get seven days, but they're going to give you unlimited calling for that entire seven day period. It's a game changer. Absolutely love this type of marketing. Now we do other marketing as well, guys. We do uh, cold SMS along with the cold calling. Uh, we typically do both at the same time because we're already paying for the data, right? So we want our data to stretch. We want our, our dollar to stretch as far as we can. Uh, six new calls going out just like that. Boom. 
We also do direct mail. Uh, we also have radio ads that cycle on and off the radio. Um, we do some ad online ads in marketing with Facebook and Google AdWords. Um, those kind of vary month to month because we'll either up those budgets or decrease them, but we typically have something going at all times. Uh, looks like one answered, five ringing, and the one that answered, Jane's on a call with. Boom, it just connected her. Oh, it ended right away. It must have been a voicemail, and that's what happens. Sometimes the voicemails will act as a connected call, and then the caller will just select the button that says drop the voicemail, and then it'll take over. Here's one Dana just got on call. Let's see if we can't listen into that. Right. Here's Jane. Since very important to us. Please hold the no belief. Nope. That is just a answer machine. And that happens, guys. That's all right. The name of the game is volume. All right. This is a numbers game. I've said it several times here, and I'm gonna keep saying it because it's that important. Uh, Mark says, how do the VNL new leads versus follow-ups, missed calls, voicemails, busy lines, et cetera, like the output wise? It's a great question. It's really how you want to do it, Mark. So when we have people that call us back, um, we send those to a voicemail box that my partner and my acquisitions guys can monitor. And basically, unless they call back saying that they're interested in selling us a property, we don't waste time calling them back. Now we also pr prepare them though, when the voicemail that we drop to them, that voicemail just says, hey, this is Dave with Household Easy. I'm calling about a property that I think you own and I'm looking to buy some more in the area. So if you own any properties and you are interested in selling one of those properties, call us back. So we essentially disqualify ourselves on the voicemail we leave, right? If they don't own a property, then there's no reason to call us back. If they own a property and they're not interested in selling it, again, not really any reason for them to call us back, right? So we wanna keep those, uh, those individuals from wasting their own time and our time. So on the outbound voicemail that we leave, it's, it basically says, hey, this is Dave with Household Easy. I'm calling about a property that I believe you own. And if you have interest in selling it, give me a call back at this number, right? And I leave a number. If you don't have a property, you can disregard this message. And then when they call back on the on that voicemail box, it says, hey, this is Dave with Household Easy. Thanks for calling. I'm so sorry that I missed you. Um, if you do, in fact, have a property, we're looking to buy some more. So leave us your name, your phone number, and the address of that property. I'm not calling back missed calls. Because again, I'm disqualifying myself. I'm weeding these people out. I'm only calling back people that leave a voicemail and they literally say, hey, Dave, thanks for calling. I do have a property over at 232 you know, Pine Street and I'd love to sell it. Give me a call, right? So don't overthink that, Mark. Um, I don't have these callers doing any follow-ups, right? My team does that internally um, and we automate a lot of that with our system too, with our CRM. Their job is just to reach out to new people and see if they have motivation to sell Six. or interest at all. What's up, Ryan? Annie is my favorite too. She's the best. I see. So you're the owner of this property, right? To fifty thousand. No, we we look, you know we're not interested in what you're selling. Perfect. Move on, guys. No big deal. That's going to happen a lot. People are not going to have interest. This is a numbers game. I think I've said it six times now. No big deal at all. Uh, Mark, you had asked about like busy lines. Whenever the system calls out and gets a busy signal, it puts them into the queue. So we basically have it set to where it's going to keep trying a number either up to five times or up to seven times before it's going to mark that number as being a bad number. Um, also, we're calling at different times of day and on different days when we do those redials. So the odds of them getting a call you know, five days in a row at 10 a.m. are going to be very, very unlikely. Typically, what's going to happen is they're going to get a call and then three or five days later, they're going to get another call at a different time of day. And 
It might even be three to five days later, they're going to get another call and it might even be a different person calling. The voicemails are all the same. Those are fixed, right? That's a, that's a message that I recorded and dropped in there and the system pushes that into, um, is this the same guy here? I can't remember. Have a great day. Yeah, I think that was no big deal. Um, but yeah, don't overthink it, guys. This is it's really pretty simple. The goal is to just find individuals that have interest in selling. And then from there, it's up to you. It's your job to qualify those individuals, to send an offer to those individuals or set up a time to go out and meet those individuals in the field. And that's really what it comes down to. All right, 12.30 on the dot. Guys, I'm going to wrap up. I'm getting hungry. I have not eaten today. Uh, don't forget, Batch Dialer offers a free trial. There should be a link below this video, okay? This free trial is a seven-day free trial. It's a full week, and they include unlimited calling in it. Now, you're going to have to get your own leads and your own skip tracing. Hopefully, you have that already. Drop some of these old lists that you have in. Take advantage of the trial. Start calling. You don't even need the virtual assistants to do this for you, you can do it yourself. If you wanna take it to the next level and you wanna hire a virtual assistant to do just like I am doing, I am more than happy to share with you my company. Her name is Kareen, she's out of the Philippines, she has workers that work for her and you can connect directly with her by filling out the application right down below this video and she will reach out to you and give you some options. I think right this second she's got probably anywhere from I think she said she had 28 earlier people working for her now. And at any time, she's got five or 10 people that are looking to come on. So she is the best. And also, she's going to help manage these assistants, right? I don't have time to do this all day, even though I really enjoy doing it. She, on the other hand, is making sure that the people that say they're on the clock are actually dialing. Also, whenever I want to roll something out new, so let's say I have a new process. This lead needs to be entered into the system this way. Instead of me having to go train 10 people, or in my case, three, I train Kareen. And then Kareen figures out when those virtual assistants are gonna be on the clock. And then she goes ahead and trains those, those individuals and makes sure that they are doing it the way that I like to do it. Now, here's the coolest part. The way you like to do it may be different than the way I like to do it, and that's okay. It doesn't have to always be the same. What we do is we have them do the heavy lifting. And they do the cold calling, right? The cold part. They determine anybody that has interest in selling and then they add those over into our system. From there, we determine, hey, is this person worth calling? And if so, let's let's see if we can't send up, set up an appointment, send them an offer, so on and so forth, guys. Keep it simple. Again, check out the free trial, batchdialer.com forward slash Dave. And I am signing off. We'll see you guys next time.